And the times of the things for today, we'll start off with love songs. I like this stuff. Okay, you want me to look at the camera? Yeah, please. Go ahead. Okay, uh, I'm looking at the microphone. Okay. The dart tournament we're having today has drawn people from virtually the entire Midwest. Michigan, Minnesota, Chicago, Northern Illinois, Wisconsin, all around Wisconsin. It's uh, one of our first major tournaments and we're looking forward to having more down here at Irish Fest. Uh, we got the idea from the Irish Fest people. Obviously, there's a lot of darts in Ireland. Virtually every pub in Ireland and in England have dart boards. Uh, darts has grown in Milwaukee to the point where uh, we've gone from eight teams three years ago to over 300 teams now here in the town. Uh, we're looking forward to Milwaukee to be the next major dart town, and we hope that we can stay involved with Irish Fest in the future. Once more, sportsmanship is very important. Please don't disturb the other players. The public will stay behind the table. If you're not shooting, please don't go between the tables and the standards. PJ Peter Farley. Hey, in front of the don't take one an hour and a Tell us what about the uh, Bake Off. Okay, this is the first year of our Irish Bake Off, first year of Irish Fest. We have five categories in the Bake Off. We have yeast and raised breads, sweet yeast, breads and loaves, ethnic loaves, sweet ethnic loaves, biscuits, muffins, and scones. We've been fortunate enough to have entries in every single category. Um, wouldn't have been able to pull this off without the cooperation of Universal Foods. I'd also like to thank several people who donated some beautiful gifts. Waterford Crystal, Bleak China. We have a wonderful painting donated by All Things Irish. Um, Aaron Limited donated the Waterford Crystal and Bleak China. Eileen Ward Fitzgerald has given us to present as gifts some Irish coffee, um, glasses. A Touch of Ireland from Wheaton, Illinois has donated some gifts that will be presented to our winners. Um, at this time, I'd also like to thank Judge Connors, Madden, Mike Sullivan, and Mike, Bra Mike Barron, who have been kind enough to spend their time down here this Saturday to judge our entries, along with people from Universal Foods. I can laugh there.
the reason. There's an Italian that doesn't make a bad celebration. <laughs> Anytime you're ready, right there, go ahead. Okay, this is our first Irish Fest in Milwaukee, and we think this is probably one of the biggest Irish festivals in the entire country. And we really are pleased with the crowd that we got. We had no idea that we'd get this kind of a, a population and crowd into the event. And obviously we're drawing from a much larger population than just the Irish population in the Milwaukee area. The Irish population is much smaller than the numbers of people that we're getting here. And the purpose was to educate both Irish and Irish Americans in Milwaukee as well as non-Irish as to what Irish culture and education is. And we feel that we've assembled probably the best group of Irish traditional musicians in the entire world. And I've, I've just had so many people come up to me and say that they've never been to anything where they've had so much fun and you know, really so many varieties of Irish music and the Irish food booths that we have and the activities for the kids and the, there's a darters tournament going on here and right now we're just, I'm about to sample some of the uh, Irish uh, bakery goods for the uh, bake-off and just an incredible response that we've gotten and just amazing. I don't 
I mean nothing but... Yes, sir, perhaps. Oh, you're quite welcome. You cheat. What? You cheat? Yes, you did. You see, he hit me in the back of the head. I'm not a cheat. Yes, yes he is. Come on. What? What's oh, sir? Oh, get your heart. This is easy. Ah, oh, there's nothing to it. Dang! What, to walk away like that? Oh, get your sir. Oh, I think I made a mistake. Oh. <laughs> Okay, are you going to ask the questions? Or you I'm just, just going to talk extemporaneously about the festival, the musicians. What mostly do you want? Um, basically, how great a festival it is, and how we are excited about the crowds. Uh, this is a. Uh, okay, I'm ready, ready, sir. I'm ready. So. Well, we're at Irish Fest now on our second day, and we've got a wonderful crowd. And we've got today and tonight probably the best group of Irish traditional musicians ever put together in the history of the country. And you can feel the excitement growing. We've got a lot of activities going on right now with all three stages running. We're going to hope the, <laughs> hope the weather holds out. The pipe smoking contest is going well. The bake off is just terrific. And everything's just going fine. The, um, the music that's currently on right now. We've got on the Schlitz stage, Lou Nassa, Marianne Miller's over at the Harp stage, Channel 6. We've got Fiddler's Green from Chicago over at Miller and Paps. We've got the Gary Irish Dancers. Tonight we'll have Carmel Quinn again, John Gary and Joe Feeney. And then later on, Blarney. We'll have Day Dunnan and we'll have the Red Clay Ramblers. So well, all in all, we're in for a real exciting day. And uh, we're looking up here right now at all the people on the bridge who are trying to get down here. and. Uh, Join us at Irish Fest, and it's going to be a great day. Traditional music of this place in the United States. <laughs> okay. Because it's the party line. Right. Well, the whole idea of the workshops really is to supplement the kind of performances that you normally see at a festival of music and singing and dance uh, with information about the background uh, of the particular traditions in question. And because we're in America, particularly about the history of the Irish culture in America, and I think uh, more particularly, again, recent evolution of the traditional culture into being something less than uh, a marginal form of Irish American culture to something uh, a great deal more than that. It's now, I think, a very integral part of most Irish American communities, and especially in the major metropolitan areas. And basically what we have here is uh, old forms of music, song and dance, which have been preserved here in America by the musicians. Uh, older musicians and uh, now younger musicians, some of them indeed with no Irish American ancestry at all. We find a lot of people from different ethnic groups who have been drawn to Irish music mostly to the folk revival, but sometimes by hearing Irish groups playing in festivals and concerts, the kind of festivals we have here. And uh, the idea of the workshops, again, is to explore somewhat more in depth the background, the history of the songs, various styles of playing, say, on the different instruments, and there's so many different instruments in the Irish tradition, 
the fiddle, the flute, the concertina, accordion, pipes, whistle, guitar, banjo, mandolin and so on. That an awful lot of people really are very interested in finding out the background to how Irish music got to be played on these instruments and the various regional styles. And in some cases the American styles because Irish communities here, because they were cut off from Ireland, sometimes evolved different ways of uh, interpreting the older forms of music and song than the people back home in Ireland. Uh, the Greenfields of America was conceived really to uh, bring the older forms of Irish traditional music, song and dance to Irish communities across America that haven't been uh, perhaps as much in touch with this aspect of Irish American culture as, uh, as they might uh, have liked to have been because some of the older musicians died off and before the say 1970s when there was a resurgence of interest in ethnicity and roots uh, there wasn't a great deal of interest frankly in, in many Irish communities in the older forms. But things have really switched around now and uh, I think the Greenfields of America has been partly responsible in certain areas for restoring an interest in the older forms of, uh, of Irish culture and also in encouraging younger people uh, who are Irish American to take pride in their cultural heritage, to learn the older forms which have been around for several hundreds of years and it would be a great pity to see them die out and uh, that's what we're all about, trying to keep it going. You know? Thank you. Okay. Play a lot of cards. We have one of the largest uh, exhibits of early Irish art treasures in the United States. Uh, these art treasures date back to approximately 500 BC. They consist of uh, Celtic gold from the Iron Age and they also include uh, a number of uh, art treasures from the uh, early medieval period. Uh, such items as the Cross of Kong, the Arda Chalice and the Tara Brooch. These are considered the national treasures of Ireland and what we have here are replicas that were made for the Columbian Exposition at the Chicago World's Fair for 1893. Uh, we also have uh, a number of uh, color reproductions from the Book of Kells which is the most famous illuminated manuscript in the world and the Book of Duro which is an early medieval uh, gospel book 
uh, beautifully illuminated. In addition, we have a series on the uh, Milwaukee Irish and the cultural and historical contributions made by the Irish community in Milwaukee, and uh, another series of uh, exhibits uh, detailing the Irish experience in Wisconsin.